Today we're reviewing the Ritchie Ultra. You guys are excited about this and so am I. Such a heritage behind the Ritchie brand and it's cool knowing that Tom Ritchie, one of the very first, if not the first mountain bike designers in the world is still kicking out killer hardtails. Today we are in beautiful Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm here with my buddy Cody. We've got loamy conditions and I wanted to take this bike to a special trail that really suits what it's best at. This is not a great Sedona bike, so I didn't want to film the review in Sedona. So today we're in the forest in Flagstaff on a nice green trail where this thing is really at home. A couple quick changes from the first look. I put a suspension fork on it, a Stepcast 34, my favorite super light fork. I've got my wireless Axis Eagle that I got from Thunder Mountain Bikes. If you wanna hear my thoughts on that, I've got a whole video about it. And I've thrown my Fall Line 9.8 dropper. Now, the dropper bolt, the boss right here, prevents my dropper from going all the way down and I'm not able to use my dropper at full extension. That is a bummer. There's still a couple things about this bike that are still old school. And part of that's cool and part of it's not. Like not being able to fit that full dropper in there, that's a bit of a bummer for me. We've got 2.4s on here. We've got OK Mud Clearance. Hello, UK fans. I do encounter mud every now and then. Uh, there's a couple puddles up here that are sticking to the tires. But now we're going to hit the trail and learn more about this bike. We're here with Cody on follow cam. I sure appreciate him. I know you guys like it too. Let's go have some fun. So this is where hardtails really shine. I'm going to start a new video series about trails that are perfect for hardtails. Only this one, I'm not going to tell you where it is because this one's a secret and I don't want to blow it up. It is legal but you're gonna have to explore to find this one. Immediately, right off the bat, what you notice about this bike, the front end is low. It puts you in a racer attack position. I don't like that. Uh, if This bike feels like my old GT in a lot of ways. That stack is super low. I'm getting pain in my hands and I just feel really hunched over. So it'd be a great like cross-country racers trail bike but even that cannondale scalpel had a slacker head angle in this and that's a race bike so yeah the uh, stack is low you just have a lot of pressure on your hands i get a lot of comments from my patrons saying i get numbness in my hands and pain in my hands is my bike just too long for me well, it really depends. I need more info to diagnose that. And that's one thing we do over on Patreon. But usually it's the bar position and the bar sweep and the bar roll. And a lot of people ride like this with their wrists at a right angle. Keep your wrists in line with your forearm, not like this. But yeah, I'm getting a bit of wrist pain on this bike because of the lower position and the flatter bar that comes on this. So that could all be remedied with a higher rise bar with a little more back sweep. Boy, it sure is nice for the climbs though. That front wheel will not lift. It feels very compact. Wheelbase is short, reach is short. This is not a long stable sled. It'd be an excellent marathon bike. I would need a, a higher bar though. I cannot sustain this riding position all day. Feels a lot like my gravel bike. Just kind of hunched over and tucked in. Now, a lot of people like that. Just because I don't doesn't mean it's bad. But I like a little more upright position. This bike is a little bit more nervous at speed than something like a Sour Crumble or the Stanton Sherpa. Those bikes are a little bit slacker a little bit more composed at speed but this bike is more fun on greens and i consult with a lot of people on patreon and try to help them find the perfect bike for where they live and currently i have a huge crop of riders from the uk who are riding a lot of stuff like this no big bumps no big rocks a lot of gravel roads and this bike is a lot like the next progression from a gravel bike so if you're coming from a road or gravel background, you're gonna be used to this attack fighter jet riding position with low handlebars. You're gonna be used to the little bit steeper head angle. You're gonna be used to the short wheelbase. 
and it could be a great fit for you. If you're manualing and jumping and playing, there are better choices. Not to say you can't do that on this. Oh, this is the perfect trail for it though. Just zippy, flatter, loamy XC, no real bumps. That frame is so compliant, even softer than the 853 Sherpa. So this would make an excellent single speed for, especially like rigid, for just out and exploring and really smooth terrain like this. I'd be hating this bike in Sedona right now. It's just not composed enough. And it's not really meant for our trialsy, steppy riding we have. We're up at 7,000 feet today. My lungs are not acclimated. So I'm going a little bit slow, but this bike feels light and zippy. It's happy to climb. It just wants you to keep pedaling. It's not lightning fast accelerating like my spot rocker. It's a little more chill, but it's cool to see Tom Ritchie's influence. He remembers when hardtails were great and not totally overbuilt and just beat you up. And this bike has that feeling of those wonderful bikes of old. This thing's so sketchy, I'm not even looking for bonus lines. I feel like I'm on one of those track bikes where the front wheel's smaller than the back wheel. My bars just feel so low and I feel slanting forward like I'm just in attack racer position. But it doesn't have the sprintiness and the eagerness of an XC race bike, but it does have the riding position of one. So if you like lower stack and you're looking for a great bike packer or a long day epic tourer, I think this would be an excellent choice. The frame feels light, definitely supple, feels like it breathes, kind of an organic feel, like kind of like it's part of nature instead of this robotic alien metal creation that doesn't quite fit in. It's more modern feeling than the Niner Sur 9. It's less sketchy, but they do have a similar vibe to them. This is the absolute perfect trail to showcase this bike. It's one of those bikes that just encourages you to keep pedaling everywhere and never stop and coast. Just get into a groove and just pedal for hours and hours and hours. It doesn't encourage me to pop off and play everywhere or look for little jumps or bonus lines. It just encourages me to have a great day on the bike, gelling with nature, and taking the excitement level down a little and having more of a calm zen experience. Definitely more of a zen, zen experience on this bike than adrenaline seeker. But I love bikes like this that do give you that zen experience. And I feel like hardtails do it far better than full suspensions. You just kind of become one with the trail, zone out, relax, and man, what a great vehicle for that. Reminds me a lot of the Stanton Sherpa in that way. That's another Zen bike, but the Sherpa is noticeably slacker and more, I think the Sherpa is like 65 and a half degrees, unsagged. So if you did venture into black diamond terrain, I'd pick the Sherpa over this, but they both have that kind of higher BB feel lower stack zen ride through the woods like when i'm in my 60s this is what i'm going to be looking for the reach is quite compact i don't feel stretched out i'm five foot six with the legs of somebody five foot two and the torso of somebody five foot nine reach and fit wise i actually feel like for this kind of zen riding i like the sizing like i said i would run a much higher rise bar but if this was all I rode for a month, I'd totally get used to it. I just have a lot of weight on my hands. Seat angle could be a little bit steeper. Head angle could be a degree slacker. It could be 10 mil longer, but then it'd be a totally different bike and it'd kind of miss what I'm enjoying right now. Yeah, I've got a few patrons right now that I'm working with that I'm gonna recommend this bike to them now. Especially my friends in the UK who ride a lot of this stuff. Man, cornering, it's a little bit scary how much weight bias is on your hands and on the bars. I feel 
definitely front wheel biased. Now, I normally ride over the front wheel a lot, but this one, even in my neutral position, it's putting a lot of weight on the front. So lots of traction, but with the short wheelbase and a little bit steeper head angle, I feel like it wouldn't take much to pitch me over the bars if I had a little momentum stopper. Still, it's right at home here. What a special ride. It does not want a manual or wheelie or jump. It takes quite a bit of effort to get that. Woo! This is fun though. I'd much rather be on this, on this trail, than even my Maniac or an RSC Middle Child or a Kona Hanzo. Picking the right bike for your trails is so important. And if we're honest, most people have more green trails near them than black diamonds. And if you're having a hard time unlocking the fun of your trails, and you feel totally overbiked on your 160 mil enduro sled, man, a bike like this can help you fall back in love with riding. So I offer a bike consultation service for my patrons, people that wanna pay me to support me, to give them personalized recommendations based on their budget, where they ride, how they ride, what they're looking to get out of in their rides. And a few patrons lately have been telling me, hey, I moved from West Coast to the East Coast and I'm totally overbiked and I'm falling out of love with mountain biking. My 160 mil enduro sled is straight up boring at the local trails and I love mountain biking and I don't want to be bored. What can I do? I think a hardtail is the answer. And man, if your trails are like this, a hardtail is definitely the answer. I love full suspensions too. There's no way I would pick any full suspension in the world over a hardtail on this trail today. So even though this is a boring, rolly trail, I'm having a lot of fun today because I'm on the right bike for it. This bike's a complete joy. Ooh, we got some thunder. Whoops. <laughs> Even my elbows are feeling some pain right now. I just have a lot of weight on the bars and on the hands. It's that low stack. What a nice pedaling position though, my goodness. I feel like I could pedal this thing for days. So yeah, if you want to pick my brain on hardtails or full suspensions and learn what I'd recommend for you, for your budget and where you live and what you like out of a bike, become a patron today. It supports this channel. It helps me make more videos, helps me put food on the table for my family, and it helps you avoid a costly mistake buying the wrong bike. <laughs> I'm so used to longer slacker bikes with the front wheel out ahead of you more that I have to relearn how to corner on this because the wheelbase is really compact and I cannot get over the front like I normally do. I have to get over the back and ride it in a more old school riding style. That is so weird for me. Oh, this dirt's magical. What a special experience riding this today. This is real interesting. This is the first bike I've ridden in the last three years where it punishes you for a modern riding style over the front. It makes it more sketchy, harder to control. You actually have to get your butt back. It is not the best tech climber. It's more happy spinning circles on flowy smooth stuff. Hopping up little square ledges, getting over logs. It is a smooth frame, my goodness. Nice job, Richie. A really good rider can ride any bike extremely well. I'm not a really good rider. I need all the help I can get on geo and fit and droppers. And so that's why I'm so picky on my bikes because I'm not a good enough rider to just make every single bike click. Some people, they can't tell the difference between five different bikes and they can ride them all equally fast. I am so picky because when a bike's a little bit off, it really magnifies my lack of skill. To me, having another degree here or there or another 25 mil reach makes difficult sections of trail easier for me to ride. 
you could throw a pro on this and throw me on my favorite bike and the pro would spank me in 10 seconds they'd be out of sight that said i feel like my riding skill level is on par with most of my viewers and sometimes the needs of a racer are very different from the needs of an everyday rider so be careful when you put too much stock in someone's advice that doesn't ride like you if you ride way faster way better than i do maybe my reviews you know they're not gonna help you as much and you could benefit from the pros but if you know you're not riding at a pro level uh obviously learn what they're doing but be careful putting too much stock in it so i focus a lot in my bike advice on how long you've been riding what your riding background is what brings you joy in riding like your balance between jumping and popping off of roots and you know crushing out the fastest climb you can or hitting the biggest step downs all of that will really influence which bike suits you best and i truly feel that because i'm so picky i have a pretty good idea of what bikes will suit people best thanks a lot what a perfect day man what an experience this is beautiful so i'm on the brakes pretty heavy because i don't have confidence i don't know what's coming up and uh, i haven't fully adapted my riding style to this bike yet it sure reminds me of my gt to cuesta with that shorter reach longer seat tube hey that wasn't bad that worked that low front end helped that it reminds me of some of my favorite mountain bikes from the 90s but far less sketchy with modern component sizes but i'd be going over twice as fast on my maniac right now i'm just just taking it easy today oh that didn't work <laughs> oh. yeah i'm very uncomfortable in this technical stuff with the exposure with little wet rocks here this bike will do it i just have to slow it down a good amount i can't it's not one of those stable plow bikes where you stop worrying about your line you really have to pick your line on this if you're like me yeah my elbows hurt i feel pretty bent and hunched over i'm not crazy about these richie wheels hub has terrible engagement still how cool is that that richie's still designing bikes if you miss the good old days of your steel hardtail from the 90s this will bring back so many of those memories steel is real on this one this has that almost underbuilt lively ride feel that i'm really not getting out of hardly any mass-produced bikes these days and i applaud richie for avoiding the temptation to just overbuild bikes and keeping them light and springy and exciting to ride out of more than 70 hardtails on the channel this is the one the first mass-produced hardtail that has that exciting not overbuilt springy supple elegant ride to it the stanton sherpa is close on its heels but this does ride a little more like those small boutique handmade frames what a thing of beauty yeah even in this rocky stuff it's a smoother ride than a lot of frames if you want an even more in-depth review on this bike with more information or on any bike i've ridden head on over to my website hardtailparty.com where i'm posting written reviews about these with a little bit more you know pros and cons and summaries and things like that so i invite you to head over there all right there's a little section here kind of bluish black it's really not that hard but it's going to be scary on this <laughs> you can just see how over the front i was and how heavy that front end was like that's really not a big deal but on this geo i got a little bit out of sorts and a little bit squirrely on that all right this is a handful on this thing 
It does have a short wheelbase though. <laughs> makes it easy to kind of pick up, but it also makes it a little bit easy to wheelie out and like feel like you're eating the bars on big lifts. So this truly is a special bike. Let's get out of here. That was close. Uh, after you. Yikes. So let's wrap this up before I get struck by lightning. What this bike is good at, it is so good at, which is greens, gravel roads, fire roads, long distance days that aren't too technical. And even though the riding position isn't quite what I would choose for my personal preference. Yikes. That doesn't mean it's bad for you. We all have different things we want. So I always try to explain in my reviews what it's like so you can decide if that's what you want. I don't know if I want to be out in this field. <laughs> My goodness. It's getting scary out here with the lightning, so I'm going to wrap this up. <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> oh my goodness. This Ritchie Ultra is so cool. I'm so glad that it exists, and I'm glad that Tom is still building bikes. And I'm glad to see a large producer be able to build a bike that has the feel of the smaller boutique builders. This is this and the Stanton Sherpa are the two bikes that have the most boutique feel of those small builders. And they really knocked it out of the park with the ride feel. It looks killer. It's really good at what it's really good at, which is green trails, gravel roads, fire roads, long distances. If you wanted a steel bike to race, I think this would be the bike that I would choose to XC race. Just because... So if you're looking for a bike for the mellower stuff, this thing is so good at that. If you wanna learn more about this bike, head on over to my website, hardtailparty.com. Check out the reviews section where I'll give you more details. And if you need help picking your next bike, become a patron, help support this channel, and get customized advice for you. Thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains, and you're invited.